Thank you very much. Mrs. Harms, please. Sehr geehrte Kolleginnen und Kollegen. Honorable colleagues, Mr. Borg, the Ukrainian citizens are really fighting three fronts simultaneously. The first one is their daily struggle uh, to try and rebuild the new re Ukraine and progress uh, in the area of fighting corruption, establishing transparency, create an independent just uh, judiciary, and uh, working within the uh, police uh, uh, departments. That is a, a, a voluntary front that they are fighting, and all of this is achieved despite the war, despite occupation from Russia. The second front where the Ukrainians are fighting is the front in the eastern Ukraine. For over a period of three years, more and more people are being killed, and it is more than 10,000 people that have uh, been killed. And these people uh, have uh, been killed because Vladimir, Vladimir Putin uh, wants to uh, wants to make sure that the Ukraine does not uh, uh, move away from his sphere of influence. When the entire uh, world is really just looking at Donald uh, Trump, well, the people of Adivka have seen what happens if the Kremlin decides that in Ukraine the fight has to start again. And when in, in, in the har under harsh conditions, winter conditions, a city is uh, taken under siege again. Now, the third front the Ukrainians are fighting when people in Adivka were uh, die, uh, were dying in Rome, Budapest, uh, and other cities. One is uh, speaking about uh, removing the sanctions against Russia. Romano Prodi made this quite clearly, and uh, he spoke. Uh, he said, let us get Trump to remove the sanctions against Russia. And then he took Trump's words, and he said, let us make Europe uh, large and powerful with Putin. Now, people who are saying such absurd nonsense, and it seems to me that this comes both from the left and the right side uh, of uh, the political uh, sphere, I believe that removing the sanctions is giving up part of the European Union. Ever since Avdivka, I think we all know that we should actually be talking about increasing the sanctions. And in any case, we should be talking about Minsk. W Minsk should achieve peace, or at least the lack of war. But how can you speak about uh, this if you have an occupying force who denies that this is actually an occupying force? How can you possibly achieve peace with this party? A true Minsk solution this is what we owe the Ukrainians, whether they are uh, uh, perceiving the EU as a third front or as a partnership. That is really in our hands, ladies and gentlemen.